Like many long-running stories in our lives, everything begins with Pocket Monsters. Pokemon Rumble is a very fascinating sub-series in the greater Pokemon franchise. Initially starting on WiiWare, Rumble takes all the Pokemon that you know, love, and potentially hate, shrinks them down into adorable little toys, and as your Mon of choice, you just push forward and mash the attack button to disintegrate any opposition in your way. It's super mindless, honestly. If you think the Warriors games are already mindless hack and slashes, well imagine that but also linear. It's not completely devoid of thought, the typical type advantages and disadvantages are here, so it is a bit important to plan out your team before heading out, but there's no real getting around it, this is the most brain-dead Pokemon games in the whole franchise. Though, that being said, it is still kind of fun. Something about the pure simplicity, meshing well with the joy of capturing some of the monsters you come across and eventually taking on the bigger bosses, I didn't hate my time with this. This does succeed as the first game in a brand new series with plenty of potential for future entries. Plus, I mean, it was on WiiWare. It's not like the competition was that strong on that platform anyway. Rumble would eventually get two new entries on 3DS, with Blast and World. Blast was one of the 3DS's first games, actually, and gameplay-wise, it is identical, so it's super simple. The Pokemon roster has now expanded to include Gen 5, that's kind of cool, that is my favorite gen after all, but the basic button mashing gameplay is just as simplistic as always. There is actually a bit of a story now, not much, but they've actually given a bunch of the characters a bit of a personality, and there are some rival Pokemon you occasionally run into, a little bit more thought goes into who you throw into the levels, which are also a lot more visually appealing than last time. It's not groundbreaking by any means, but Rumble Blast is a fun time. A solid 6 out of 10. And it's a very similar story with Rumble World. There are Pokemon from Gen 6 now, that's kind of cool, but once again, gameplay, exactly the same. Except I did save myself two minutes in. That was fun. What's more interesting though, is this was actually a free-to-play game at first, with your playtime being limited until your air balloon fully charges back up or whatever obligatory excuse they come up with so you just can't play the same level twice in a row, that's stupid. Luckily, soon after, they made a physical version that just allows you a ton of crystals early on so you can play to your heart's content until your thousands of crystals run out, I guess. I don't know, I didn't play the game long enough. I got to experience enough of the game's fantastic story about fighting against a wizard or something. Oh uh, no, that's as far as I got. If you're so desperate that you want to get into the Rumble series, then Rumble Blast is the one for you, with World being second best, if you are so inclined to find a physical copy. The WiiWare one is lost to the ether when the Wii Shop channel closed, and I don't think Nintendo ever cares to bring it back. There was a mobile game as well with Rumble Rush, but that's also been delisted, so... Who cares? This miniature retrospective has only really been a long drawn out means to bring up Pokemon Rumble U, the worst game in this series. The arenas that once only played a part of the other games, well, that's the entire game now. Gross. There are no more linear levels to go through, just a series of differently themed arenas where you and some computer controlled toys, because you likely can't convince your real friends to play this with you, just wreck a bunch of enemy Pokemon for minutes on end in this little box, and, that, and that's it. I'm, I'm pretty sure you just do that for the entire game. But hey, it's on Wii U now, it's HD. Damn it, look how shiny the coins are. Alongside the release of Rumble U were a lineup of low poly Pokemon figurines that essentially were just early amiibo, acting as the first use of the Wii U gamepad's built in NFC technology that previously was only known about due to a leaked Rayman Legends trailer of all things. Only 23 figures were ever released, most of them through retailers like GameStop for only a few dollars, and you would actually buy them as a random Pokeball, and you wouldn't know what was in them until you bought them and then opened them up. Power to the players, baby! And then in-game you can scan it, and you would be able to enhance your specific Pokemon with improved strength or different moves, which, for a game like this, it's pretty worthless. But in real life, yeah. Yeah, they're pretty worthless. I spent $20 on just this one figure alone. Probably not the grossest use of my money, but still. 18 of the figures were standard Pokemon, and a few of them were promotional Kyurems, and even some Shinies. Ooh, everyone loves a good shiny Pokemon. I wonder how expensive one like the shiny Eevee is gonna cost now. Oh, I'm gonna vomit. 